Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is the process of erosion. What types of waves cause erosion? Go on. Destructive. destructive waves. So destructive waves, higher energy cause erosion, erosion to break down the material. There's four types of erosion that I want to talk about today, and I'd like you to imagine one of the following scenarios. Number one, you've been to Glastonbury and you're absolutely covered in mud. Number two, you've been asked to clean the car by your parents. Or number three, you're doing the dishes at home. So, if you imagine, let's take off the covered in mud, uh, I go home, the first thing that I could do is I could get in the shower, stand there, and do nothing, and just the pressure of the water would wash some of that mud off. Do we agree? That's called hydraulic action. So that's your first type, and hydraulic action is the physical pressure of the water. In a similar situation, if I had a hose pipe against a car, spraying it, it would remove material. Or if I put a dirty dish under the tap, the material would be removed. Okay, we happy with those things? The sea, therefore, in hydraulic action, acts as a, a power, a force, bashing against the cliffs. And as the pressure of the water smashes against it, it can break them down. Okay, the physical pressure of the water smashing against. Now, there's one other complicated thing to talk about if you want an A star. I'd like you to imagine that I've got a cave with a narrow entrance that gets bigger like this as we come out into it. As the sea comes up, and covers up that gap, it fills it with water, yeah? There's now air trapped in this bit, which can't escape. As that air gets compressed, it becomes compressed air, like you get in an air rifle. And what happens is, it gets compressed and compressed, and it eventually will explode, and it causes mini explosions in cracks, and that is also hydraulic action that can break down uh, material. That's a really clever way of explaining it too, okay? But simply put, it's the physical pressure of the water. The second thing I could do, imagine again I'm in the shower, is I could get a sponge on my hand and I could start to rub like that to remove some of the material, yeah, or if I had the dishes I could use a cloth or I could use a sponge on the cup. And that physical rubbing action, that would remove material as well, that's another type of erosion, it's called abrasion, okay, so abrasion is the rubbing effect. Now it actually is a bit more like sandpaper because all the tiny particles of sand in the sea rub against it and abrade it, okay, I don't know if that's actually a word, um, a bit like sandpaper. Now, some people um, may have heard of like exfoliation. Have you heard of exfoliation, anybody? Okay. You get soap and it's got particles in it, little bits of sand, and you rub them against it and it removes the dead skin. Okay, so it's abrasion, a bit like sandpapering yourself. Quite why you want to sandpaper yourself, I'm not entirely sure, but apparently it's good for you. Okay. Um, so abrasion, rubbing or sandpapering effect. So imagine the sea, it picks up lots of bits of sand and it rubs against the material and gradually breaks it down. Happy with abrasion? Next thing then is corrosion. And corrosion is the chemical action. So now imagine, instead of the shower, I'm covered in mud, I get into the bath full of bubble bath, so there would be chemical reactions with that soap starting to remove and starting to clean me. Are we happy with that idea? If I got my dirty dish and put it into a bowl of soapy water, it would actually erode, remove some of the material just by soaking it in that soapy water. And if I used soap on my car, it would make it more effective. So there are weak acids in the sea, and these weak acids will break down, erode, chemically destroy some of the rocks, especially things like limestone is particularly susceptible to corrosion, chemical action, so weak acidic sea, breaking down and corroding uh, the ground. Okay, so that's the first three. The fourth one is a little bit different. The first three are all about breaking down the cliffs, yeah? This one is about material that's broken down within the sea. So you imagine you've got a really stormy sea, destructive waves, carrying lots of material because it's high energy, bashing into each other like this. They're going to start to break down those bits that have already been eroded by the other uh, processes uh, from the cliffs. Imagine, I suppose, a topical thing today would be that we, when it snows tomorrow, we all went outside, we all got snowballs, we stood in a big circle and we all tried to throw them to the middle to hit each other. As they bashed into each other, they'd break down and become smaller. So attrition is the breakdown of material when it bashes into itself or into other bits. And actually what will happen is those big bits will get broken down into smaller bits that will then be used for abrasion. Okay? So, key points. Destructive waves cause er erosion. Erosion is the breakdown of material, and it can be done by hydraulic action, 
which is the physical pressure of water, abrasion, which is the rubbing or sandpapering effect, corrosion, which is chemical action, or we've got attrition, which is the breakdown of smaller particles into some even smaller particles by bashing into each other. If we go back to talking about waves, process, and landforms, waves, destructive, process, erosion, landform will be something like a cave, an arch, or a stack. Done.